John 16. I have told you these things so that you will abandon your faith. For you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I am telling you these things now, so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And none of you is asking me where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I'll send him to you. And when he comes, he'll convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you'll see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak on its own accord, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. In a little while, you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that, you will see me again. Some of his disciples asked each other, What does he mean when he says, In a little while, you won't see me? But then you will see me. And I am going to the Father. And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, in a little while you were. You won't see me, but in a little while after that, you'll see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me. But the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering in the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you will have sorrow now, but I will see you again and then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At the time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you'll ask the Father directly and he will grant you your requests because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters and figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly about the Father. Then you'll ask in my name. I'm not saying I'll ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, At last you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there is no need to question you. From this we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed, it is here now, when you will be scattered each one one going his own way, leaving me alone, yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. Wow, there's so much in this chapter. But for me, the thing that stood out the most to me is when Jesus said in verse 33, I've told you these things so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. You will have trials and sorrows. Jesus doesn't promise us an easy life when following him. In fact, he says it will be hard. You can enter the kingdom of God only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Following Jesus is hard. It's countercultural, but take heart, be encouraged. Jesus has overcome the world. It is finished. The battle is already won. 
When trials and sorrows come our way, God is not far away. He is close to you. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is with us in the fire, through the storms, and no matter how high the mountain we face is, God can move that mountain. He can make a way when there is no way because he has overcome the world, because he is rightfully sitting on the throne, because he reigns now and he will reign forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble when evil people come to devour me? When my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. So whom shall we fear? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us refocus and fix up gaze on Jesus. He is coming back soon and he will wipe every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death, no more sorrow or crying or pain. All these things will be gone forever. He will make all things new and it all ends with Jesus on the throne victorious and the devil being thrown into the lake of fire forever. So my question for you today would be how can you share the good news with someone that Jesus has overcome the world and it is finished? And I'll now pray to close. Jesus, we thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit, which guides us in all truth. Thank you that you have overcome the world and you are rightly on the throne and the enemy is under your feet. Help us today to reflect on the cross and how you have overcome the world and endured and has suffered such a painful death on the cross to restore our relationship with God. By your blood, you made us right with him and you set us free from the power of death. Thank you that it was out of love for us that you did all of this. In Jesus' name, Amen.